Welcome to the Magic in the Midwest podcast, starring USA Today best-selling author J.B. Michaels and his more successful wife, Ashley Michaels, and now your host. Wow, well, thank you very much, announcer. I am a USA Today best-selling author, and my wife is more successful than I, mm. even though I hit the USA Today bestsellers list twice. Believe it or not, she's still more successful yeah. um, uh, than me, you know, so I'm just saying. Say hello to everybody, Ash. Hello. Yeah. I am more successful. She is. Um, so... Uh, hello, everyone. This is podcast number 61. That's crazy. Roger Maris's home run record, 61 with an asterisk. <laughs> um, yes, so, uh, yeah, 61. We're heading back into Universal Studios. Um, but first, a little housekeeping, ladies and gentlemen. This podcast is brought to you by a couple different things. Okay. Um and the podcast is supported by my many books. Uh, I've written 14 books, um, you know, in three different series, one standalone. Uh, so we have a lot of great, you know, fiction. There's audiobooks. There's, um, there's audiobooks available. There is paperbacks available. There are lots of great things uh, for you to check out, check it out on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Just type in, or just go to the Google and type in J. B. Michaels. My bearded face will show up, and all of my books will show up underneath. Not just his face, his bearded face. My bearded face. Uh, so that's something that really, um, it's kind of cool, you know, that that happens now. You know, before that didn't happen, but now it does. Pretty so, neat. It is really cool. It's really cool. Uh, but anyway. Um, so that is, uh, also ladies and gentlemen, really important. Um, I'm also an insurance and specifically well, my focus. I was going to say, what is your, what do you think the most important kind of insurance is? You know, for, for everyone listening to this, I would definitely say life insurance. I just think people should check it out. I just, I just, especially if you've got kids and you're taking your kids to Disney and you know. I mean, it's an important not not for Disney trips. I'm just saying specifically, it, you know, no. But people who listen to this are parents with kids right. a lot of the time, and uh, you know, it's just good to have some of uh, protection for your family. You know, it's one of those things Especially, I think when you're younger that you feel like you don't need, and then I mean, even right. though you 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 do even right. then. Um, but I think it's something that's been something I've been thinking a lot more about. Yeah. You know, given given our age yes you yes. just never know that's true that's true also um we have met many wonderful people through the podcast one of which is emily over at uh, you can reach her via email at emily at magical mouse com. she is a vacation planner and she specializes in disney and universal but she can book all travel accommodations including cruises and all-inclusive resorts um, this comes at no cost to you, and she can help you with all the things that go along with that, including fast passes and dining, and she will also monitor for savings for you. So if something comes along for something you already booked, she will let you know and take advantage of that savings. Um, and she does create customized itineraries for you and your family. So like I said, you can reach her via email at emily at magicalmousetravel.com. She is awesome, very nice, very knowledgeable. If you're planning a trip, there's a lot to do. And she also has been on the Velocicoaster. Right. And 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 I'm really jealous. Maybe she knows and, tips. And we need to Does she know tips? <laughs> there is a character, you guys. Another character. There's a third a per, person. A third person. It's a a third pers- character. I don't know what he is. Or she. she they. Or they, them, they, them. Um, I don't really know who Tips is, but Tips <laughs> is around and will be around. Yeah, tips. every podcast. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you guys must think we're nuts. Um, I think so, most people that was the band camp, wasn't it? The yeah, it was a band camp exclusive. Exclusive. So people don't actually. Most people don't listen to those. Right. Oh yeah. Well, we have to. Yeah. <laughs> We do have exclusive hard to episodes. To. You're right. We need. We're trying to get to a different platform. That'll be happening soon to make it a little easier. Um, you yeah. know, uh, to access buttons. our exclusive yeah. apps. So maybe um, if you're listening to this in the future, you're like, what is Bandcamp? Money! If you're listening to this in the future, 
sorry. 1.21 gigawatts! Sorry. I'm not sorry. Is there something wrong with the Earth's gravitational pull? Anyway. Um, that was pretty good. That's my best impression. I need. <laughs> There's no who does a really good impression of that. Sand. Tips? Sand does. Is Sand Our friend tips? Sand. Uh, by the way, uh, if you are HHN fans, I want you to call M soon. Um, we just got, she just got notice that. Do we know? Uh, Do we know that for sure? She's got notice that HHN tickets are going on sale very, very soon. Mm. So if you are a Halloween Horror Nights aficionado like JB and Ash. Um, Aren't you like the king? I am HHN? the king, the godfather. The Ridge. You will, if you will. You um, will. The Ridge. <laughs> Not if you will, we're just saying you I will. I <laughs> started it all. Okay, with our group of friends. But anyway, um, and no one's here it to, is to argue that. It's not a touchy subject at all. It is not a touchy subject at all. Oh, hell no. Um, all right, so now, Ash, now. Uh, uh, we are heading back at Universal. I forgot to mention the last time that we had Universal, and I'm just doing a little correction here. Okay. Are you admitting that you were wrong? Uh, no, I'm admitting that I omitted <laughs> Something I shouldn't. I wasn't wrong. I just omitted. I feel like you omit things a lot, like you know, uh, like that you bought a new TV or just didn't mention it. Just all set up in the bedroom. Yeah. yeah. Somehow. And now you're reaping the benefits. So anyway, um, that's definitely. I take the, my silence as me agreeing. Oh yeah, you have the, the best television is now yours. I don't need okay. the best. Television. Now yours. It's now yours inside there. No, oh, the best baby. one is yours. I got the hand me down. No, 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 no. No, I, I do. I don't want to go into the technical details, okay? But technically, yours is better. Um, okay, uh, from from one uh, standpoint, <laughs> uh, picture quality. Not all the other standpoints. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I hope you die. I hope you don't because i love you all right um but i just got you covered in life insurance so now you can't um but anyway so (laughs) oh my gosh don't say it don't talk about that all right so uh i forgot to mention that we were we should have i should have said that mummy and blues brothers and all of those and twister and jimmy fallon's race through new york okay are actually in new york Okay, the New York area. I did not specify I that. Cares People that. care. I care. No, they don't. Okay. Who cares about areas at Universal? All right. No one. So, um, all right. So now, today we're going to talk about if you were to keep walking out past the mummy um, and walk down the street, you're heading into San Francisco. Okay. Um, the, so there is a San Francisco area. And uh, sort of like a fisherman's wharf uh, motif. Uh, there's a Italian restaurant over there uh, where you could get like a pizza joint. Um, and uh, Richter Burger Lombard Seafood Grill, which it's weird. Lombard Seafood Grill is one of the only sit down restaurants uh, in Universal Studios, Florida. And I don't really hear anyone talk about it. Well, so. I feel like a lot of people eat it. It's City seafood. Walk. It's seafood. Yeah, and that's, you know, people... Yeah, people seafood. don't... People aren't super uh, seafood, you know, oriented. Um, so San Francisco, uh, the main attraction when it first opened uh, was Earthquake. Mm. Um, and Makes sense. Yeah, Earthquake, San Francisco, which was a big, a decent-sized hit. I know we've touched upon this in the past, but it was a decent-sized hit for Universal... In like 1976, when Hollywood just made disaster films like over and over again. They made all sorts of Towering Inferno, Poseidon Adventure, Earthquake. Every major studio thought it would be a good idea to come up with some disaster film. Right. Right. And it was, some of them are really good, to be honest. Um, Earthquake is one of the lesser, I feel. Like it's good but it's not great you know uh you'll remember the rock uh made a movie that is basically uh similar to earthquake 
Oh, the San Andreas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Do you remember that movie? Mm, yes, Her, I him do. and I do. Carla Gugino, or um, yes. So that uh, that movie. So you have the you have earthquake. Now the earthquake experience at first was you know based on the original film, and they kind of did this backstage tour type of thing where they kind of explained how they did the visual effects inside earthquake. They had this cool stunt where a guy falls through a building. Oh, you know, like the you know the sounds going and everything, and he falls through, and it like he hits you know he hits a mat, obviously down at the bottom okay. of the sound stage, and then from there you go into the trams, or actually no, sorry, from there you go into this like model area, okay, and you're standing there and you're looking at a model of San Francisco. And of course, you know it starts to crumble, and everything happens because they used, you know, they used miniatures to right, to right. use the special effects. And then you get on the tram, and the, I mean, the tram is huge. This ride could fit a ton of people, and the tram is still there because what's there now is Fast and Furious Supercharged. Um, but this went through a couple iterations. It was Earthquake at first. Which was really, actually, really neat. I mean, I thought it was cool. You know. So, were you sad to see it go? I was. Okay. I was. I I liked that you were in the tram. The things were kind of going crazy. You know, that you was like shaking underneath, and then of course, you know, the street literally. You're in a subway, and the street collapses. Oh. And there's like a truck coming down from the street. That sounds neat. Oh, it was really cool. And then, like, there's fire and there's water so, like, shooting actual everywhere. Actual effects. Actual <laughs> physical effects. Yes, it was neat. And then they could just reset it. Mm-hmm. You know, very similar to Hollywood Studios. Um, well, Disney's MGM Studios Catastrophe Canyon. Okay. Like almost the same thing, except Catastrophe Canyon was in a canyon. Right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's Eisner and Universal sort of basically copied each other in that way you know just uh, slight differences yeah uh so it was a cool experience i mean it wasn't it was a decently long experience i think it was like 20 to 25 minutes wow. the whole thing yeah yeah um it was cool i i thought it was neat and then it became disaster with the rock and like christopher walken or something and interesting yeah okay. and then and then after that it shut down and became Fast and Furious Supercharged, which everyone... We all know is a big, big step up. Right. Which everyone <laughs> everyone hates. I mean, I don't think there's one person that likes this. I mean, there might be. Maybe super fans of Fast and Furious, like, give it a Maybe. Break. You would think they'd more be, like, annoyed that it's that bad. It's just really that bad. Um, so, yeah, it, it's... You know, it's so weird. I And you'd think that Universal... it. Fast and Furious is one of their biggest... I, I, okay, no. I think it's, at this point, their absolute biggest franchise mm-hmm. in history. This this franchise yeah. has made more money for Gotta them. Gotta be. Yes. Gotta Has be. to be. Because there's so many so of them. So many of them, yeah. Uh, just by numbers alone. You know, numbers just of films. Quantity. Yes. <laughs> so you would think that in Epic Universe, they would maybe do some sort of like test track or cars type of ride with Fast and Furious. You know, like, what the heck? You, you know, you think they would do something a little different instead of what they're doing. You know, with yeah. this tram ride that is simulating going fast with screens and helicopters and just I mean, weirdness. You know, yeah, it's a budget decision. I think so. Yeah. I definitely think so. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, yeah. What's there now, not as good. As there was in the past. Uh, there used to be a Beetlejuice show over here. Um, or maybe it still is sometimes. Um, you don't know. No, I think no. Yeah, no, it's gone. There was a cool Beetle, Beetlejuice's Graveyard mashup show uh, that I thought was really fun. It had all the original monsters, like Universal Monsters and Beetlejuice, like mixed together. Oh, yeah. It was a fun show. It, it, it's something that... The, was unique to Universal yeah. that no one else was really doing, and they just got rid of it. Hmm. You know, <sighs> maybe not 
not the best decision. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Have you been on earthquake? No. Or disaster? Or no. Any? no. 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 Okay. No. Um. So and then we have we we've eaten a burger at Richter Burger, haven't we? I think we have. Where? Where? It's in San Francisco. Oh, okay. Okay. Richter Burger meaning like the Richter scale earthquake. Yeah, I don't. It used know. to be much more like thematic, but now it's just San Francisco. I don't just think kind of we weird. ate there. I no, maybe we. I, I, I know I did with sanded brownie. You okay, know, yeah, like in the middle of the night, like at eleven thirty, and it was the strangest thing. They were. I'm not kidding. They were just talk, like it was like I was a ghost. It was like I had died, <laughs> and I was watching people that were alive because they just. They Didn't just talk completely, to you. they just ignored me completely. Mm, well, I mean, I get it. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, uh, and then if you go a little bit further down the San Francisco area, okay, you would start to see, now we're going, this is still old school universal. We're not, we're not out, we're not there yet. We're not at the big stuff yet. Are you going to fall asleep? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm just very tired. You are. You got to step it up, girl. You're you're doing your part. This is your podcast. I know. I, if I could eat Cheetos while we were recording, I would be waking up. That, that, did you just hear that? That is the most ridiculous. If I could eat crap. No, Cheetos. While we're record, crap. Cheetos. Um, all right. So now, Ash. Yeah, Mr. Health Nut. I am a very I healthy I eat man. way healthier than no, JB, you guys. No, no, no. He... His family doesn't eat healthy. I do. Except for one of your sisters. I eat healthy. I mean, maybe both of them. I don't really eat bad. You guys don't really eat, like, vegetables. But that's not the only form of nutrition. But it's a very important part. It's just completely missed. Mm -hmm. I take vitamins. Um, Anyway, so... Uh, See. And I have high fiber, so I just make sure everything's out. Okay, gross. High fiber. Uh, So... What? <laughs> I can't be of this. Speaking of fiber and eating, uh, you would head down towards Amity Island. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I wish we were doing a video podcast because everyone would be screaming in terror looking at your face right now. <laughs> um, Whoa! But anyway. That is serious. <laughs> That was really severe. Uh, it was great, though. Yeah. You loved it. Um, so, <laughs> so basically, you walk down and you start getting into these like carnival games. It's very like New England um, shoreline motif, sort of boardwalk ish. Um, lots of light blues and you know rusted, ru- you know like just exposed cedar. And you know you walk down, you see the shark. That is strung up the tiger shark. No, I mean, I'm just making stuff up now. But, I mean, if you want to go totally thematic to the movie. The tiger shark that they, of course, the fishermen find that's not the actual shark um, is is strung up. And then you would walk into the line. There's lots of fish nets and, you know, fishing <laughs> tools and, and poles tools. and are, barrels. Are you there for the tools? Okay, yes. I am with the tour. Um, please play with my tour. Um, anyway, so you guys, that's absolutely gross and weird. <laughs> Mr. Fox came in to the hello. You, it's about what he said, though. What, what did he say? No, Mr. Fox, <laughs> go away. I don't want to go away. <laughs> Mr. Fox is gone. Okay, he's gone. Tips. Um, <laughs> Tips is replaced tip. <laughs> okay, so you you go into this amazing line. You keep for, creaking the table. You keep creaking the table. I'm going to like totally kill you. Like, my name is Ashley. And like, I you guys, sister- side note, real quick. We went to see Corolla and I could barely hear it because JB's breathing. I had to lean over. I almost moved down the row. It's really quiet and this is what I hear. It was so good. By the way, we're in. We'll talk about that maybe in an exclusive or something. Our next podcast. It was so good. It was Are you so done? Annoying. Are you done? That's what I felt like saying. That was only like twenty seconds of it. Right. You could tell your hair really does not like being straight. No. It really hates it. It's like, what are you doing to me? Um, but anyway, uh, so 
<laughs> it really is. It really you is. We're stay on topic. Come on. You just went off topic. So don't tell me to See, get back on topic. Every time you say something critical to JB, he always has to point it at someone else that isn't him. Right. It's the baby of the family. Whatever. It's clear. No, I, I, I have problems. I married you. Okay, so... See? Um, <laughs> Here's an example. <laughs> no. Then you wa- you see this gorgeous... Did I say gorgeous? Yeah, gorgeous. Maybe it's because you were looking at me. I, that's definitely it. Especially right now. It's definitely it. No, you do look gorgeous. You're always gorgeous. <clears throat> you, you know? He's just saying that into the pod. No. Yes. I mean it. No, sometimes you're like, you look really... You just said everyone would scream in terror if they saw my face. That's because you were making a weird face. Oh, no. Guys, nope. Not your natural. Nope. (laughs) Backtracking. So, uh, Jaws, the ride, you guys. Jaws, the ride. I feel like that's what you were going to say. And you get over to Jaws, the ride. And it looks as though it's just, you know, nice Amity Island. It just looks very pretty and... You're going to go on a little fishing expedition, a little fishing trip. Um, you know, that's the setup. In the old original ride, there was like literally CRT TVs with Amity News like playing all around, <clears throat> which I I'm thought was great. I'm kind of ticked great. that that's not there. I am I'm kind ticked, of ticked as well. None of this is there. Right. It's all gone. So we're talking about stuff that's completely gone. I mean, you should, kind of should have led with that. I said the past. I said this is historic. This is still old universal. I wish you were in my past. I gave the context. I want to be with tips. Tips. Okay. So now you get on the ride, and it was a boat ride. And, of course, it's very similar to Jungle Cruise in that you're not really in deep water. You're just on a track that has filled with water. Um, And you had a guide with you. It's very Jungle Cruise-ish in a way. Um, now, the original Jaws the Ride uh, was a little too ambitious for its own good, sort of like the original movie, Jaws. They had such a hard right. time filming it. Um, the mechanical shark, Bruce, notoriously known as Bruce, uh, would not work uh, very well. Did not work very well. So Spielberg had no choice but to like improvise. And it's one of those weird things where... Something bad happens, and in the moment it feels like it's really bad, but it actually wound up helping the film immensely. Right. Because you don't see the shark very often. You know, but right. what do you do? It still looks great, I think. I think it does, it but I think great. the fact that it's it was limited. really cut down, it's yeah. limited is what, how, why it holds up so well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just... It just goes to show you Spielberg's, like, ingenuity in the moment and that whole crew and cast to... to you know, pull that film together and make this amazing film, which I can watch over and over so again. So good. It's time. Um, it is time. Summertime. I, feel, I feel like it is. Have you seen those big um, showings that they do of Jaws, like, out on the beach? No. Where they put a screen out in the water, oh, and you're supposed to watch it while you, cool. like, sit in a tube, you know, like, with your butt in the water? <gasps> Yeah, that's what they, that's what places do. I mean, they do it at lakes and stuff too, but they do. do that it. is cool. Yeah, I mean, I'd be I'd be like, nope, I nope. Kill that bird for you. Everyone's uh, like probably popping up thinking they feel things. That is really things. cool. Ash, I did not know this. Where are they? So they do this in lakes, but they actually do. I it mean, in the I've ocean. seen. Yeah, I mean, it's just something that someone started really? doing, and yeah, that's cool. It is. I'm in. Let's do it. I'm you not. would never do it. I would, would never, never do it. Harrison will never do it. Harrison will do it with me. No, when he's 18, yes. he can do it. Before that, no. So just... Harrison could just get eaten by a shark when he's 18. He wouldn't care. Is that what you're saying? No, I wouldn't care. Well, you apparently don't care What if he's six and gets I eaten I would by protect him. How? With my tree trunks for legs. You know. Kidding. Are you? No. Um, yes, of course I would protect him. No, I just realized I can't, you know, make his decisions for him when he's 18. He still can. You know, let's be real. No. Let's be real. Uh, no, you're right. Uh, Not if you so, have boundaries. True. Not every parent does. <laughs> they don't need them. Um, so, now, Jaws, the, the ride was so ambitious, like I was talking about, that at the end of the ride, Jaws was supposed to clamp onto the boat with his, you know, three rows of serrated teeth or whatever. Two, I guess. And he supposed to drag the boat around in like a circle and when it worked it was amazing like people were like holy cow 
it did not work very often. I guess for the first year or so, Jaws was constantly down, and I think it was only open for a grand total of like 60 days before they shut it down and reworked the ride. Because okay. it just had so many mechanical issues and yeah. failures. But, I, I mean, it was really cool. Like, the, the shark actually bites the boat and yeah. pulls the boat. Like, well, and that's cool. like a tall order too. When you think about rides like uh, Jungle Cruise or yeah, even even um, Jurassic Park. Yeah, you know what they're trying to do, like the the part, like the shark is in the water. That's like a totally different yeah. level of, you know. Yeah, that's, that's bold. It's bold. It is. It, it, that's a that's a good, really good point. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's you know, it that was shut down, and then the the next version of the ride was was much more i would say easier to like to to run and it obviously ran for like 20 years after that which i thought was great and i loved it and they changed the ending completely right the ending was basically jaws 2 where there's like this the power line the, yeah they put they shoot the the boat captain shoots the power line it falls into the water it jaws you know, unknowingly bites down on it, and right, and then he, it like a big explosion, and then you see his like charred carcass like floating in the okay. water. Got it. Got yeah, it. so it totally changes. But I mean, Jaws the ride was really fun. At first, you know, you're out just like in this very pleasant Amity. We're going to Amity Island. It's very pleasant. And then you see, you know, the shark fin come out of the water, and you're getting like this, you know. And then, of course, it, like every ride, you know, something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then mm-hmm. when they're on their way back and they have to divert because Jaws is coming and attacking the boat, they go into this like houseboat, you know, where they like dock the ships. Right. And it's all dark in there. And they use the spotlight to like try and find like where Jaws ooh, is. It's really, it was, it was a fun experience. Oh, I'm so upset that it's not there. And you I got, never got to go on it. Right. And you got to see Jaws like, up close a couple times you know and the you know the shark worked all the time it was neat and then of course you know the houseboat is like creaking and cracking and he's attacking that and i mean it was really cool it was fun i i you know uh you know whatever i guess it's it's gone and there's i just miss it you know i just miss it when i first went to universal though it wasn't open you know my very first trip so kong and jaws Ooh. We're both not open. That's rough. Yeah, it was. It was rough. Uh, but we still, I still remember everything about it, you know, even without that, because I did still love it. Back to the Future of the Ride, which will be for another podcast, of course. Um, but uh, so now, Ash, they got rid of all of these things. So Amity and Jaws was taken out mm-hmm. in favor of <clears throat> something that, you know, Tell us, tell us what is now. Harry Potter. Place. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, obviously Harry Potter is super popular and, and I'm glad that it's there. But it, it really does suck that you have to take out these classic, you know, these rides iconic. that were based on, yeah, that yeah. were based on iconic movies. Like it's, yeah. it's sad to me. Yeah. It you is. Know? And that's sort of the way that Universal has to be. It's like you have to get rid of something. Maybe the they'll bring Jaws back in some way oh. at the new park. Like, bring him back. You know what I would love? Everyone would love that. What I would love they would, if they did like a... I mean, if they did a... There's rumors for Epic Universe that there's going to be a Universal Monsters attraction and land. Like, just an entire section dedicated to it. Because it is still a very popular property. Like, very popular. Yeah. Um, all those monsters, people know them, you know, it's just, it's part of our culture. It's just within and out. It's also a way to get those HHN fans coming back all year. Yes. Yes. That's a good point. Thank you. Brill. You should be in marketing. Oh, wait, you are. Um, so, uh, you all, you all. So we basically, uh, so that would be amazing if they could somehow put Jaws somewhere in the area, that would be cool. Like. You know, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Oh my gosh, that would be epic. Yeah. So it should be an epic universe. It would be because we need we need Jaws back. We do. We just do. Um, all right. So now, 
Ash said Harry Potter, but she wasn't specific. There is Cre- King's Cross Station. Okay. Is what you see when you're I, I, when you're walking from San Francisco. I you see, with you, you see King's Cross, right? Not really and the know. Ministry of Magic. <laughs> I get, well, not really, but sort of. And then you see the big double decker bus with the voodoo guy, yeah. the voodoo head. I really like that because it reminds me of seeing the trailer Azkaban, yeah. for the third yeah. movie, which so I was good. very excited about. Yes, because it's the best book. Well, uh, is it the best movie too? It's the best movie. I don't know, you know, is it the best book? Deathly Hallows, the book, is great. I don't know. I think I'm I'm going to still stick sucks. with Azkaban. Yeah. Oh, Let's get yeah. into your opinion of the ending of that later. Yeah, I know we've already talked about that. So, um, all right, now, um, then, of course, you go through the facade of King's Cross, and you walk into, and I'm not kidding, I mean, I miss Jaws, right? But I also, when you walk into this area, you are, it's one of those moments in a theme park uh, where it takes your breath away. Like when I first walked in, when we first walked in, it's amazing. Diagon Alley is probably the best, like, detailed themed land that Universal has, period. Um, I definitely think it's the best theme. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have my thoughts on that. But, yes, I agree. Oh, what do you... you Well, you and I have talked about this before. I I think it's super detailed. It's amazing. I agree with everything you said. But I also feel like it's... As it should be. It's just a replica, basically, from what you see in the films. It Um, is. It is. Why is is that... It sounds like you're giving that... Well, Lower I mean, I don't think it's any it. coincidence that it's the most well done and they had, like, this very that's clear true. image of they what did. they needed to do. Yeah. Um, no, you're right. That's, that's a good point. That's not bad. I'm glad that it is. I, I'm not saying I wish they would have gone an, an original route or anything like that. Um, but, you know, it's not lost on me that that is why, I think. Okay, so you're... Okay, no, no, you're right. I mean, I guess... And I, I guess that was one of the big sticking points with Disney and Galaxy's Edge. So, like, people were, I guess the Imagineers and Disney itself and, like, Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy, I guess Kathleen Kennedy was head of Star Wars at the time. Um, she was like, no, let's create something that's new, you know, that we can create, you know, and add to the lore of Star Wars rather than, creating like right, and that's a decision it's not i'm not saying it's always right to go the original route i certainly think it's more challenging and if you can achieve that you've done something really yeah. amazing yeah um but it's not surprising to me that the thing that universal does you know the best outside of hhn is something that they basically carbon copy exactly yeah, yeah from yeah. the movie almost. yeah it, it's anyway. Yeah, Diagon Alley is great. And, you know, it's weird. I think Galaxy's Edge, I, I, when we were there last time um, at Galaxy's Edge, which we'll get to in in the next podcast, so I don't want to give too much away, but I, I'm not going to go into specifics. I'll wait for that, for that podcast. But I felt what Disney was trying to do, mm-hmm. put it that way. I, I, it's, I was sold last time. Like I felt immersed. I felt immersed. Oh yeah. In Batu, Mm -hmm. And you do, you cannot help but feel immersed in Diagon Alley. It's just, it's everywhere. It's like you look up and the crooked buildings, the dragon on the top of Gringotts, like it in the fire breathing dragon, I should say it does shoot fire from his mouth. It, it's, it's so good you know what i'm gonna say about that too is this yeah we've heard some people and like everyone's opinion is valid obviously but some people will talk about they feel that the millennium falcon that you see in batu is underwhelming 
And for that same reason, I feel like it's overwhelmingly good. Like, it is the size that it would be. Yes. It's, like, to scale. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel immersed. I feel like I actually am somewhere where something could have happened in that universe. Yeah. I feel in it without yeah. feeling like it's a replica of something. I understand what I can, like, why it's a replica. That makes sense. I'm just saying, if you look at Pandora, you look at Galaxy's Edge, these are two places where there's not necessarily, like, this huge icon. And it's still... The way you feel in those areas of the park is yeah. is amazing, and that was something completely, you know, there was a concept, right? Yeah. Star Wars universe, and then Avatar yeah. right? universe, we know what that looks like, but they took that idea and made it their own. Yeah. There's a difference, you know, I, I, would, I would have loved to see Universal take a stab at, like, an interior part of the castle. Yeah. You know, I don't have any idea how they would do something like that, but I feel like it's... Why, why do we not get to see Hogwarts at all? I mean, I know you do in one of the line queues, but it would be really neat to explore the castle. Yeah. And yeah. do, you know, not just copy the Gryffindor common room. Like, do something... Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't right. know, a little original with yeah. it, too. Um, and I feel like they achieve that with a ride with, um, you know, Hagrid's... What is it called? Magical Whatever, Creatures like Motorbike names. Adventure. Yikes. Yeah. Um, long, you know, they took long. a concept from the book, movies, and made it into something. And that it's the wasn't best really, ride everybody yeah, says. Yeah, I mean, it's I think best. that's got to be better than the Forbidden um, Journey. Forbidden Journey, which is just trying to jam too much in one ride. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I wonder if you know. Yeah, I wonder what people think. Like, what's the biggest attraction at Wizarding World? Is it Forbidden Journey? Is it Hogwarts? Or is it is it Hagrid's or is it Diagon Alley itself? Like, I wonder what people think. What's you know what Hogwarts? I mean? Hogwarts Castle, where you wait in line. Oh, oh, for, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, for the Forbidden Journey. Yeah. Um, I would. I think most people would say Hagrid's. Well, do I think? don't know. I, I don't Maybe. It's definitely not Gringotts for me. That hit real low on the list. Well, I mean, I'm just talking about the land of Diagon Alley itself. Like, I wonder if people... Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, if people were to rank, like, what's the best part of the Wizarding World? Would they say Diagon Alley itself, just the whole area? Or would they say, you know, would they say Hagrid's? I I wonder I mean, I think it just, yeah, depends. Let us know what you guys think, if you've been there. Should ask people that have been there. Um, so now there is a ton to do in Diagon Alley if you play by Diagon Alley's rules. So if you're if you're a person that's super into Potter and you want to have the full experience, you go to Ollivander's, okay, you get a wand, you have that wand experience, okay, and then the wand, I guess, really does open up an entire kind of an entirely new experience like for Diagon Alley. Oh, like okay. you interact with Diagon Alley in so many different ways if you have the wand. So cool. that makes it special, which I'll give your sister props. She she's read the kids the books, mm-hmm. which which is great, you know. Good job, mom. Um and then she also bought the wands knowing that eventually they would go and right. they got the ones that interact with the the land cool so that's cool so that's you know that's one way you could experience i Diagon actually Alley. did not know that if you got a certain kind of wand that that happened oh yeah i didn't know that oh yeah well now i just do. thought that it was just the wand buying experience no no so you, there's not any different tiers if you buy a wand from that place yeah then you're, you get yeah. to experience that. Yes. Oh, cool. You can, there's all sorts of interactive things you could do. What's the in cost? In the windows. On, what's the price range on that? Do you have know. any idea? I is it like idea. building a lightsaber? Or no, is it's it, not that expensive. Okay. Like droid? Or less expensive than Maybe that? Maybe a little bit less expensive than the droid, which the droids are amazing. Um, okay. So we'll talk about that. Uh, all right. So you know, then you have, we got Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, of course, Magical Menagerie. Um, and then, of course, there is an amazing, <laughs> amazing alley, Nocturne Alley, is there. And it's legit there. You walk, you turn in this corner, and there it is. Borgen and Burks is there. Yeah. Home of a Horcrux. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and it's there. It's really cool. 
Um, the Leaky Cauldron is also there. It's a quick service place. Uh, Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor. Um, you know, it's, it's I mean, there's lots, and there's some good shows there. Like, you get to listen to people say, you know, give, you know, tell tales of the Beetle of the Bard. Um, you could go to Celestina, you know, Warbeck and the Banshees. And then, of course, you could go to King's Cross Station and actually go to Hogwarts on the, right. the Hogwarts Express. So you and I have both done, this is what we'll end on, we've both done Escape from Gringotts. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on Escape from Gringotts? Which is, well, first let's give it what kind of ride it is. It's sort of like a, it's sort of a roller coaster. It kind of reminds you of Spider-Man. <clears throat> More than it's, it's a mixture of like a Spider Man type 3D. ride and a coaster. There's a little bit of a coaster kind, action I to mean, it. Is it? <clears throat> sort of. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's that coasterish at all. Okay. All right. Well, um, so no coaster, but I don't it think is. So. I mean, it's not like the mummy or. No, no. I mean, I don't know. All right. So it's like 3D screens and what the heck He's is he jumping. doing? Jumping. Um, 3D screens and all sorts of different. You know what else? Um, you gotta wear three D glasses. Yeah. Um, the dragons there. It's you know there. It but it's a mixture of like actual motion, like you're moving in a physical space mixed with screens. So it is very Spider Man. Like, I mean, kind of, yeah. I mean, but there I, is a, there is a coaster element to it. I want to say it is does have a track like a coaster because you're in Gringotts, which was coasterish in the movies. You know what I mean? So, you know, so, yeah, it's something like, so, so, yeah, so, you know, um, Ash, I mean, I think, I think we're just, you know, whatever. There are some elements to it that are, I'm not saying it is a roller coaster. I'm just saying there is like a track like a roller coaster. Um, so you, how, what do you think of the ride? I mean, this this ride had like seven to nine hour wait when it first opened. I mean, I feel like that's just the nature of when a new attraction opens. Um, yeah, Universal, yeah. Being on it now, do I think it's worth that wait? Certainly not. Um, I think this is an overrated ride. For me, personally, I think Forbidden Journey is much better. I haven't been on Hagrid's yeah. yet. I'm sure I'll think that that's the best, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, it's underwhelming for me. Yeah. I mean, if you're a Potter fan, you'll enjoy it, but... If I had to wait in line for one of them um, out of the two, the first two, Forbidden Journey or Green Gods, I would wait for Forbidden, Forbidden Journey. Journey. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you there. I do like um, Escape from Green Gods. I like it more than you do. Uh, you it's know, just a little uh, lacking. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's just not interesting to me. And I, I love Harry Potter. I'm a big Potter fan. And I just, I don't know. It's just yeah. not an interesting... I'm kind of bored when I'm on it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, no, it's okay. Um, so I also really like the the line queue for this ride is really neat, um, except for that back part, which is just turnstiles. But, like, you go through Gringotts Bank, Gringotts Bank the lobby yeah, the, the bank, and yeah, all the goblins cool. are there. Yeah. And that's awesome. And then when you actually, the area you get on the ride with the cave where you get on is mm -hmm. really cool. It is really cool. Like, so there's some, it's dripping with detail and, you know, really cool um, environmental, um, you know, interactions. And, and it's really, I mean, it's a really neat experience. You get on that elevator, you know, you're going, you know, you go down, you know, to get on the, to the, on the ride and then you go back up. It's kind of silly, but that's sort of how it is. In, right. At Green Gots, things don't, make complete sense in the magical world correct right so um yeah i mean i i like it it's definitely a solid b for me i mean you'd probably give it what a c or something or uh, i mean i like give it c i give it like a, a b minus seven you know, i think for I me it it's, it's partially that the videos that we're seeing on the screens like the wh yeah. whatever that whatever those would be called they seem like they're being like picked out randomly from different movies to like glue together right. into a story like right. i know they didn't film all new stuff for this i think they did yeah, a little kinda. bit of picking from yeah. stuff and it just feels a little scrappy to me i don't know what it is yeah scrapped together perhaps yeah. yeah yeah okay okay fair enough 
Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say you give it like a 7.5 out of 10. You know, you give it like a, like six, a 7. 6, 7. Yeah, I understand. I understand. So it's cool. The you know the dragons really neat um, on top of uh, the the building on the exterior of Green God's Bank. Um, so and then I've, I do the one quick story before we you know head out here um, is we when we got off the ride last time. Hey, listen. Um, when we got off the ride last time. We both remember all of us took our glasses off. Oh my gosh, you guys, we are the biggest idiots of all time. <laughs> this is before COVID and everything. So, like, we walked over to the lady, like, this one of the workers who was standing in a place probably just to like make sure people weren't, yeah, you know, getting like, back on the ride or going where, yeah. They and be. we just started handing her our 3D glasses, <laughs> even though there were no bins or anywhere she could have possibly put them. She's just standing by a wall with nothing around her. <laughs> No garbage can for the glasses container. No, we just, and we all kept handing them to her, and she took the first few. And, and then, then she's like, "Guys, like, I, don't I don't take these. Take I, go down. You go down further." What are you doing? She's you like, "I don't. I don't want these." Almost forty-year-old <laughs> morons who have been on this ride a lot of times and should know that this is not uh, where you put them. Here, here, have my glasses. Like, Thank just you. So just take like, them. It's like, fine. Where we touch it. Okay, so uh, Whoa. the glasses. <laughs> That's gross. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, so we will get, you know, I feel like we could talk more about Diagonale, and we maybe will, but it's really neat, um, especially at night, too. It's, like, mm-hmm. really cool at night. I mean, I could just stand Everywhere there. at night is really cool, like, I think. I could, most I could be in all the parks that we talk about, Disney Universal, just at night for the yeah. rest of my life. Right. It's I pretty love great. the parks at night. It's pretty great. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we do have exclusive episodes on Bandcap, Bandcap exclusives. Uh, for a little, is three bucks a month. You can uh, listen to all that extra content. So be sure to check that out. Uh, please rate and review us at Apple Podcasts. Give us that, you know, the five stars if you can, because we're so worth it. Um, and um, yeah, Apple Podcasts, wherever you guys listen to the podcast, that would be great. Um, we love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Ash, you got anything to add before we go? No. All right. From the Midwest. See you later.